Uh, I've already written issue number two, just got to find the time to write the thing. My wife says that uh, she's a little afraid that the Black Panthers are going to come after us for doing this comic. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a sympathetic treatment. Tara Satana from the well-known film Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. I talked to her and her management about doing this. Picks up where the film left off. Um, it's all self-published. Uh, I'd worked for big companies years ago, and then... So you're handling everything from the uh, all of the artwork, penciling, inking... Writing, writing coloring, coloring doing publishing. The when I started working uh, professionally in about 82. So I worked for Marvel and DC and Dark Horse and all these companies. Now what do you like about doing comics yourself? Well, you know, I, as far as comics, the form goes, I mean, I like publishing books because I like books. But uh, comics are good because if you've got a story you want to get off your chest, you don't have to shoot a film, uh, try to peddle a novel, uh, the people that aren't interested in reading, you know. I get all the ideas out of my system fairly quickly. I mean, a comic like this, I think I wrote and uh, uh, created the art and everything within a week. And, uh, and my, like my Super Clowns comic, I did, uh, this is admittedly a simpler style, but uh, I penciled, inked, and lettered the last nine pages in one day. Wow. There are a lot of people that do nine pages a day. Well, what's the most difficult sort of thing about uh, publishing for yourself? Difficult? Um, I guess it's cumulative, you know, the fact that it's all on your lap at the same time. Uh, I don't know if any one thing is more difficult than another, but it's a big burden. I certainly wouldn't recommend it to anyone. This is called uh, Newspaper Girls. This, this reprints drawings that I uh, did on newspaper, and I did one per week. Put them on eBay and threatened to collect them in a book. And uh, so there's sort of an evolution. And a year later, I published the book. Uh, I didn't pencil anything, so I just started in with the marker. Which uh, you kind of have to get into a Zen frame of mind. And each one has a caption, which are sort of reminiscent of 1960s paperback covers. What is this one? I'm. My Cozy Coffins? My Cozy Coffins. She's smoking, of course. Uh, what does this say? Party's in. The party's in. It's like that. And, uh, it's funny, this book, I don't sell any of these hardly online, but uh, at conventions, people see them, they like them, and especially women buy a lot of them. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and even the offset stuff, uh, even if you're printing a thousand or two thousand, if you're on the gigantic presses, the stuff's gone through before they can even adjust any colors or anything. And for my money, the colors on these books are coming out truer uh, than the lithographic stuff. Because you don't know what went through the press before, or did they clean the rollers, and all this other stuff. I mean, this, and a lot, actually I told my partner, I gave him a list a couple of months ago, I said, I want you to destroy all these books, our back stock. He said, are you kidding me? I said, no. I want to destroy them all because either they're too old, they're not representative of what I'm doing now, or I'm taking the material, repackaging and reformatting it. So, I have a graphic novel that called it was, this is basically three issues of a comic. The graphic novel was in black and white. Well, who gives a shit? You know? So I recolored the whole thing. Which, you know, I would do a page here and a page there, and after a couple months I had the whole thing covered. Colored, so I re-release it. Uh, how are you coloring? Is it digitally? Or digitally? Yeah, it's digital. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, I also do oil painting too, so it's not like I'm completely, you know, slave of the digital thing. Well, to tell you this, about this one, this is a hardback version of this. So I took the files, reduced them slightly, and uh, did a hardback format. Now it's print on demand through Lulu. 
So they cost me a good bit per copy. I mean, I'm a, I charge, I think I charge $60 a piece for these. But uh, to my fans, I like do a drawing in it and sign it and all that kind of stuff. So they go for that. But they cost me about half that to make $30 a piece. Got this one too, which is a hardback version of this with a different cover. You know, that's not bad fidelity, but uh, my partner was so in love with this heavy, heavy paper stock, the kind you can get a paper cut from. I don't like it, and I never have. Um, for color, it's all right, but uh, you know, the paper on this is fine to me. I like a friendlier feed. Here's another thing I just did. I did a monthly sketchbook last year, and I did one issue a month, 36 pages. Some people bought it, some didn't. But then I collected all of the issues into this. This is a 350-page book. Uh, all these articles, artwork, whatever I was doing that month, I put it in there. I do this through Lulu. I charge 20, but they cost me about 10 to make. And how are you dis uh, distributing these? Do you have a distributor? Uh, or you I'm a, you know, I have a website. I have people that follow what I'm doing. I'm an eBay power seller just from what I'm selling. So uh, I'd, I'd like to be bigger and I'd like to get into previews, but they're making it so difficult. So I'm looking at other distributors. Haven is one. Uh, what else? Well, Kablam sells on their website. Do uh, you supplement your income with commissions? I uh, don't really technically take commissions. I do them at conventions. But you know, if you say you're going to take commissions, it's going to be Vampirella, 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 blah, 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 you know, over and over and over again. He's got a CD, the Von Hoffman. Orchestra. Yeah, I record and wrote and played all the instruments and all that stuff. That's monster music, monster songs. This too, you won't believe this. This is my alter ego, Arturo Basti. The Italian pop star. It's totally fictitious, you know. We really are fictitious. If I put the CD in, it won't No, no, no. <laughs> but there is no Arturo Bastard. But I've got people, gotten people right to me, like from Italy. It's like, oh, we're so sorry that you grew up on the streets and you were urchin and all this stuff. And they believe that it's, that so, it's real. So you wrote like a... A, a fake, uh, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, it's like spinal okay. tap.